I coached one of the most famous professional racing drivers on YouTube. He is already top 1% in the world in iRacing, but in this session, we're going to help him find over a second per lap. We're going to talk about one of the most important secrets about iRacing tire physics, and what we have worked in this video also works in real life. So if you want to become a better racing driver, be in the simulator or in real life, make sure you watch this video until the end. All the chapters are in the description, and I am 100% sure that this is going to make you quicker if you watch until the end. Thank you, Swelly for helping me with your coaching classes. I am Alberto Nasca. At the beginning, I was racing with more cycles, but then I switched to cars, super small formula cars, going to bigger formula cars, GT4, GT3, and currently I'm racing in Euro NASCAR, which is the European version of NASCAR car. With all the experience that I have, you're probably wondering, why did I ask for a coach? At whatever level, any racer in the world needs a coach. This doesn't mean that the driver is not good enough to understand it, but it just means that thanks to a coach, he can do it much, much quicker. Every car has to be driven differently. And the best way to improve is to ask somebody who knows how to drive that car to help you improving. Why did I ask for Swellius' help? Well, the thing is, I've been driving a racing for like four years, and with some cars I was pretty fast. While with some other cars, especially GT4 and GT3s, I was constantly driving one second slower than the pros. And I, I couldn't figure out why. I was taking exactly what I do in real life, replicating it into a racing, and it, it just wasn't working. I could have kept trying for 10 years without finding the solution, and the only way I could fix this issue was thanks to Swellio. I was constantly struggling with the understeer, and I didn't understand where it was coming from. The only way to understand the source of that understeer was to understand the tire model thanks to Swellio lessons. In motorsports, whether we're talking about real racing or virtual racing, you always need an engineer or a coach that explains you how to drive that car. And by just doing one class with Swellio and watching all his courses, I finally found the secrets to make the car work and I finally started to improve. And I tried different coaches. I can tell you that Swellio was the first one capable of explaining exactly precisely how things work. It was really enlightening. I kindly suggest you watch his lessons, book a class with him, because it really helps you. So to go fast with your racing, I understood that you have to be super precise with the brake. And I can say that learning to be that precise is probably going to help me in the real world. That's why I will keep training on iRacing. Because the last secret that I'm going to tell you, if you find iRacing hard, real cars are easier to drive than iRacing cars. If you learn how to drive perfectly on iRacing, I think you will improve in the real world. Thanks, Wellio, for your help, and thank you guys for watching. How are you, man? I'm depressed because I'm too slow on the GT3 and I don't understand why. In iRacing, you mean? Yeah, I mean, in, any, in every other simulator, I'm fast. On iRacing, I'm not. Today, I watched like 20 of your videos on, on the course, mm -hmm. I, the big progress I did today. I've been racing for like five years in iRacing and I'm still slow. I can't get higher than 4.5k I rating. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's just a lack of understanding of a specific behavior of that specific yeah. simulator that as soon as you unlock it, then you develop a whole new set of muscular memory that will make you drive like a 7K or 8K. <laughs> Wait. racing things. I mean, th it doesn't happen in real life. That's why I say real life is easier. The first corners with cold tires are is just undrivable. Mm -hmm. What I'm showing you right now are the important bits that we are gonna use in the session. The understeer is oh. okay. <laughs> If you want, as always, you can leave a comment with what you think he should improve, and then you can edit your comment after the session. This is a learning technique, and if you do it, you're going to retain a lot more what you learned in the session in the future. For example, what do you think he could do better in this sector? or in this corner. Ah, the understeer. It's yeah. something I will never understand. 
the worst thing that can happen to a race driver in terms of emotional feelings is to not know what they are doing wrong and why the car is understeering too much, for example. Why I'm so slow? Why? <laughs> In just one lap, I already identified that there was a pattern in his driving. And the problem is that he was trying the same thing, expecting a different result. But this is such a high level topic that it's very difficult to identify. He's incredibly consistent, he's always braking in the same place, he's doing the trail braking, it's all there. How can you find though, what is the problem? Why the understeer? <sighs> I will never understand why. Yeah, on the exit of the carousel, if you go a little bit wide, you get an off camber part and then it never goes back to grip. Okay, I know exactly how to help you, man. <laughs> Thank with you. Racing here, and this is gonna be an iRacing secret that okay. can be applicable to some specific tires in real life. It's all about tire <laughs> surface temperature this is the secret of our racing if you know how to handle this uh -huh. then you find seconds for that okay but okay. if i'm so, slow since the first lap i mean it's not that i'm slow during the race i'm slow immediately oh no 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 there okay. are three ways we can affect the grip of the tire based on temperature there is the short term the way you handle the tires affects the same corner for example in short term what you do on the entry will affect how much grip you have mid corner and that will affect how much grip you have late in the exit. Doesn't exist in real life the short term or yes? Mm, in some specific tires, yes. Uh, uh, for example, do you remember okay. mm. Fernando Alonso? So his driving approach was turning Understeer. very fast initially. Yeah. To he, cause he, understeer, he, which would exactly. in, heat up the tires and then give better grip mid corner. Uh, so mid corner, he would have a lot more grip. What he would do, turn a lot on this area here, which I call early entry. Okay. And then the car this would is heat, Fernando up, Alonso. heat up, heat up, heat up, heat up. Yeah. Fernando Alonso, yes. And then mm -hmm. here, the temperature generated in this area, just a few fractions of a second after, would make the front bite and the car would have a lot of grip here and then he would be able to get the car to point and get a better exit. So that's a short term and that exists in iRacing. Now, short term, you can have two effects. Scrub generating more grip and more heat, which is a Fernando Alonso example. But you can also have scrub meaning more heat and less grip. Yeah. Some tire compounds have less grip when the tire surface temperature goes up. It's not just that, there's more. In iRacing, we have kind of some types of temperature. The temperature on the surface, mm -hmm. on the surface level, but we also have the temperature deeper. Mm -hmm. When there is a big difference between the temperature on the inside and the temperature on the outside, scrubbing the tires on the outside makes your grip disappear. This mm -hmm. is why you spun exiting the pits, because this was cold. You had very uh, cold inside temperature, but you got wheel spin, which heated up a lot the outside of the tire and created a big difference between the outside layer and the inside layer. And then because of that, uh, you had no grip, absolutely no grip. Okay. When you have hotter tires in, on the inside, then that effect still exists, but a lot more forgivable. Even in hot tires in optimal temperatures, overheating or scrubbing the tires will make the car have less grip later deeper into the corner. So we can create a graph of temperature. Say we have the front tires in blue heating up as you turn in and the rear tires in purple. So let's say you start braking, it already goes a little bit up because when under braking, it's, it's already overheating the tires a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Then you start turning, but let's say you turn in way too fast with the steering. What happens is you generate more surface temperature on the front tires and not that much on the rears, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is now the front tires Understood. are getting more temperature and less grip. And the problem is because of that, you get into a snowball effect where it keeps getting worse. So if you get understeer a little bit in the beginning, you're most mm. likely gonna continue to understeer until the rest of the corner. And the opposite yeah. is also true. Let's say you start turning in, you downshift very aggressively the car, you turn in just a little bit and the car starts oversteering. So this happens. Now you're overheating the rear tires in purple and then the car now wants to continue to oversteer all the way into the rest of the corner. This is a graph of temperature, uh -huh. just temperature. Now, what happened with you? on exiting the pits is you, you you had like the front here but then you got wheel spin yeah. so like and then here you are now with a car that has absolutely no grip in the rears so you got even more wheel spin and then because this is higher there's even less grip and then you simply spun 
Mm. This is a generic example, but now let's compare the difference between a tire that is cold versus a tire that is up to temperature. So on the outlap, this effect of understeering a little bit, making the car get into the snowball effect is amplified. So on cold tires, you get this. Just if you, get, if you understeer just a little bit, you already get the difference higher, right? So you in get into a huge understeer right away in the outlap or in the first lap in cold tires. Like if you're starting the race, the tires are very sensitive to this screw up difference. So the, the solution to, to do well in iRacing in cold tires is to manage your scrubs so you don't have too much, so you don't slide too much the tires to not overheat the surface. The more you maintain okay. that, the more you, you take uh -huh. care of the tires and you overdrive less, the more grip the car is going to have on that outlap as the core temperature goes up. Okay, but this is just for... So now we're talking about short term, so same corner. So we don't care about the outlap or the mistake I'm doing in the outlap then affects the rest of the stint. Let's say this is one lap. It goes up, then down in the straight, then up, then down in the straight, then up, then down in the straight, then up, then down in the straight. And then your core temperature goes up like this. Mm. So now at the end of the outlap, the, the core temperature and consequently the sur surface temperature all go up. Let's say this is the optimal range. Ideally, you want to continue doing that and, and keeping it here. If you overdrive the car, mm -hmm. then mid-term, long-term, you start getting outside of the range and now the car has less grip, which makes you eat frustrated and you overdrive the car even more and then you get into that rabbit hole, right? What I'm showing here, this is the short-term, this is the mid-term. And the long-term would be lap after lap, right? So it's, it would be mm -hmm. something like this. So the long term, like it, it rarely go down, right? So if you're trying to keep the optimal range, then it would look something like this. Okay. Your issue is short term first. Let's say ideally you want to raise your temperatures front and rear like this. Braking, corner, exit. What I see you doing under braking already is you break 100%. Right here, you're getting into ABS and you're already generating an unnecessary amount of temperature. Right here, on turn end, you already have less cornering grip than other drivers who are not relying on the ABS. Because I see you break mm -hmm. at 100%, you keep it 100%, and I see your ABS lights are flashing. So that means you're overheating the tire, the surface temperature, and then by the time you start turning into the corner, you already have less grip. So you start like, again, snowball effect, right? Because you have mm -hmm. less grip and then it's worse, 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 worse. And then at the end, at the exit, what do you have? A lot of understeer. Because mostly this, this ABS is harder on the front tires. And then you start like uh, asking for more grip and then you get this ABS, this understeer on the exit. If, just if, instead of breaking 100%, you break say 90 or 85 and you're like on the limit between like ABS and not ABS, then you, you're here, by the time you start turning, you have more grip. And because you have more grip in the front, the car rotates more, it also heat ups the, the rear tires in a more balanced way, so you're heating up both ends at the same level, then the car will not will not feel that understeer on the exit because the car is gonna be temperature wise, it's gonna maintain its balance throughout the entire corner. Okay. So in a way, I'm explaining all of this to tell you don't break 100%. Okay. But yeah, not only that, that, when you break less, mm -hmm. feel that the car is gonna have more cornering grip. If you feel the difference, you're gonna unlock it. Okay, yeah, this is very interesting what you said. I didn't realize I was hitting the ABS. You still want to see the lights flashing, but a lot mm -hmm. less. And also, your issue mostly is understeer, right? Oh, this is the magic combination for you to have a car that's gonna oversteer so much, you're gonna be like, oh my God, it looks, it feels like I changed the setup. You break a little bit less and you downshift as quickly as possible to get more stress into your tires. If you combine <laughs> those, okay. now what you're doing is, instead of doing this, you're now gonna be doing this because you're gonna overheat more the rears and the, the fronts and the effects yeah. are immediate. The car is gonna be a different car on exit. Okay. Even mid corner is already gonna behave like the opposite way. Just because mm -hmm. you're gonna, instead of doing this and then downshifting say here, here, mm -hmm. instead do this. And then you downshift okay. here. So a little bit less brakes and a mm -hmm. little bit earlier downshift, totally different balance. 
It's gonna okay. feel like it's a different setup. Let's try it. <laughs> Sorry for the coach intonation. I get excited. <laughs> no, that's cool. That's cool. You're really good at coaching. That's that really that's super clear. Thanks, man. Now let's try. Even on cold tires, you you might already feel this effect. Brake. 85%, 90%, not 100, and downshift very, very, very quickly. See if you can get some oversteer into the next corner. See? No understeer. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Less understeer. What the hell? Yep. <laughs> There you go. What the fuck? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> How? It's understanding of the tire surface temperature, man. When you understand yeah. when you control it, you have a you have a lot more control of the balance than you think. Okay, I uh... You got it. You got it. You see? How is a car so under theory? Now you spin it. Yeah. It's just tire surface temperature management. Is there a way to, I don't know, to set up the, 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 the peripherals to make it easier for me to understand where is the braking limits? Because now I just have to rely on the muscle memory on the brake, which is not, not realistic because in real life you have the feeling of, you know, the, the, the yeah, sound the of the wheel braking, the G-forces. Uh, you feel the brake, the pedal that changes when you lock up the tire, you feel the smell, you feel everything. So here I don't feel anything. So is there a trick or it's just muscle memory? There's a sound and you can decrease the sound of the engine. So the sound of the tires are more uh, salient. I don't know if salient is a word in English, but it's probably in Italian. <laughs> saliente. Uh -huh. Yeah, saliente. Yeah, if you decrease the sound of the engine, you can hear the sound of the tire scrub under braking. So... Uh. When you start braking and you when you're getting close to the threshold, it, uh -huh. it creates a weird low pitch. Okay. But when you get into ABS, it's gonna be a higher pitch scrub sound. Okay. So if you wanna yeah, try, we can go to the sound options and decrease a little bit yeah, the yeah. engine sound. That's a good idea. I know it's difficult for you to feel it right now because yeah. it's a new thing. But as soon as you get used to it, you're gonna feel easily the difference. Like you're gonna feel when you get into ABS immediately. So yeah, let's bring the engine sound back to 10, minus 10. Okay. And let's try that. Nice. Whoa. There you go. You found it, man. That's it. What the fuck? Turned in too early. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Less brakes and earlier downshift. Why is that so mm. good? Because... Uh, I don't know if you got in that part on my online course when I talk about the three tools for rotation. No. Probably not because that's a very less one of the very last lessons. 80% brakes, downshift very fast. I don't shift it too fast, I think. I lost the rear. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good because now we found a totally opposite effect. Huh? I wanted you yeah. I wanted you to lose the rear actually, just so you can see clearly the effect. Break 50% downshift fast here. Oh, I could have break later. Early. Exactly. Okay, uh. let's talk about this corner. So, what are the, what's the difference between Chevy corner, the one where you said I could break later, and this corner before the carousel, the, the, the left-hander that it just went wide? What is the biggest difference between them? Ah, uh, the compression. Exactly. So, that means... To reach ABS on the Chevy corner, you can break 50%. That's already enough. If you break 100, then you're getting you get into ABS and you overheat the tires, which yeah. you were you were actually breaking 100% on the first laps of the session. The other corner, the left hander, is a braking under a heavy compression. So in that case, that's an exception. You can actually break 95, maybe 100%, because there is more mechanical grip there for you to use without uh, hitting ABS and overhe overheating the tires. Uh, yeah, just too much speed. Because I'm trying to brake less, but sometimes sometimes is too less or not. This approach, the new driving style that we're developing today, requires a more V-shaped approach. Okay. So you do have to turn in a blink of an eye earlier everywhere. Okay. Haha. <laughs> It's so much rotation. 
Yeah. Too much breaking. Because this is a crest. You're breaking under a crest. Mm, so if you break too okay. much there with the car falling, same thing here. Yeah, that's enough. You see? Too much break here? No, that was good. 50% is good. Break 100% here now. See? It's enough. It's good. You break a lot there. Stay inside, inside, inside. Yeah, so you lost the rear on that Chevy corner because yeah. you turned in too late. Okay. Ah, I lost the rear. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You have to get used to the new driving style now. The way you are driving now, a little bit less brake, more engine braking, because the car is more over series, it's going to be very sensitive to turning in too late. If you turn mm. in too late, it's going to lose the rear, always. Yeah, I see it. Too slow. Yeah, you break 100%. So if you break 100%, like initially, ABS, overheat, less cornering grip. <laughs> it's okay. like, as soon as I saw you get into 100%, I was like, oh, the Delta is not going green this time. Off camber. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> now you know. You don't take it back anymore. Now you know, yeah. <laughs> um, careful with what you did mid-corner there. You stopped turning. Like, never, never relax too much the front tires like that like keep them loaded and control okay. the balance of the car with the pedals but the front tires should always keep busy look at how much grip you have if you stay on the inside you got back yeah. on power so early and it still made it i just have to lift early and accelerate early i usually lift too late and then i go off camber Exactly. Wow. Nice. Very neutral balance there. Perfect line. Mm. A little bit under the limit on this last corner. You have to chase that neutral steer where the car is like floating. I know 100% like you can definitely do that in real life, but it's difficult to find this in iRacing. Woo! Too much brake. Yeah, as soon as you feel that the car is oversteering, drop the brakes more quickly. Mm -hmm. Release the brakes according to how much the car is rotating. Too much brakes. Under steer, you see? Yeah. Under steer a little bit. Because when you started braking, uh -huh. it was too much pressure. Ah, uh, okay. Why then under steer? Why? Uh, you didn't understeer there, I think. I think you just turned in a little bit late. Uh, mm. You understeered on exit, but on entry, it felt neutral. Too Ooh. much rotation. Nice drift. Okay, go to your replay and watch the first two laps. Just see how you were braking, how the car was behaving. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, See? too much. You're just overheating the front and the rears. You're just overheating all tires. And by the time you turn mm. in, there's no grip. Now, you're going to see the next corner is a crest mm -hmm. under braking. The car should be light. You should brake a lot less, right? Let's see how much you brake. Roll. Exactly. Now the next corner is a even even bigger crest, so you should break fifty percent here. What? <laughs> I did a hundred. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So before we started like 
talking about the tire surface temperature, you are braking 100% in absolutely every corner. Now you yeah. go to your best lap, lap 10, which is not supposed to be the best lap because it's the fifth. <laughs> yeah. if, if you drive again, the second lap is going to be the fastest. See? Wow. A lot more rotation. You can see how the car rotates a lot more. There are some more things to fix, of course, but overall, this is a lot better. Look at how the car points. See? Yeah. Just because you're not braking 100%. Much better. And the car just points. Initially, it pointed a lot. We still got a little bit of understeer mid corner. That's a different topic because you're still not used to driving style. But the car is alive now, and we did not change the setup at all. Exactly. Wow. Probably that's why I was going faster with the GTE cars instead of the GT3 on iRacing because there you don't have the ABS. So I was forced to brake less. That is correct. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Wow. There's more. We basically talked about the braking zone affecting the grip mid corner. We, we couldn't talk about what you do with the new driving style mid corner because that would be another session. Because, uh, I mean, it's just, we're talking about very complicated high level things here. Mm -hmm. You need to get used to that for like a week driving a lot. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. we, you would see <coughs> the very subtle effects and consequences and what what things you would need to change uh mid corner just a small change totally different car yeah absolutely and that alone this secret here is worth over a thousand ira maybe a thousand five hundred if you really do well with it yeah yeah definitely because we're talking about maybe a tenth per corner how much yeah. per that is per lap yeah i mean i'm paying two seconds from the pole now it means staying below one second yeah exactly it's a big exactly. deal what do you suggest to just train on this for like a week and then I'm yes, going. I, I wanted to be fully aware of the mm. short term effects of the tire surface temperature and what you do mm. with the corner on entry affects the, the amount of grip the car has, has mid corner and consequently exit. Just braking last, just not abusing the ABS is already going to give you so many ideas and so many things to think about. Um, mm. Just being aware of that is, is your homework. And finishing the course, of course, because now that you yeah, feel yeah, this, definitely. when you watch the last lessons, everything is going to make sense. That's something that if you didn't explain me, I could never understand it because it doesn't exist in real life, this thing. Mm. Uh, maybe it, it exists, but it's not worth two seconds per lap. Yeah, it's exactly. Just, it's exactly. just too much. Two seconds per lap is yeah. too much. I mean, I remember um, when I was testing a new tire in the GT86 for an endurance event. And one of the coaches said, yeah, this tire, it feels like if you take care of the entry, then it has more grip mid corner. But if you abuse the entry, it's gonna understeer mid corner. I was like, ah, mm. that's very similar to what happens in iRacing. These tires, they behaved exactly like, like they do in iRacing. Wow. To the point where someone was actually explaining it to me, like, hey, be careful on entry, so you have more grip mid corner. When I was driving in the Radical, Someone told me the same thing. Maybe it exists in every car, and now I will go one second faster in every real car. Imagine, <laughs> imagine. There you go. Can you imagine that? You follow me, or I follow you? I follow you. So this is the first time I'm driving this combo, so let's see what <laughs> I can do. I'm gonna try to stay close. Ah, this car is fun. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I already see is that I'm braking a lot less than I was than I saw you braking. I can feel the a problem. lot, like especially on the next corner, the left hander. When I brake a little bit too hard, I can feel the car just drifting forwards under steering. It's crazy because mm. I can feel under steer on a straight line. I'm barely turning. I can already feel that the car is locked up on on the front tires because there's a small kink actually mm. to the left under braking i think i'm still braking too hard we are both still braking too hard the thing is that sometimes i get too much rotation and sometimes i get no rotation it's always about four things the what you do on entry right so like the, the tire temperatures but also it's a subtle, 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 very sensitive combination between how much engine braking you have, how much steering you have, how much braking you have. Like it's those four things, they are, they of course have an infinite 
amount of combinations, so it's very difficult, like threading the needle to find the optimal one. Because if one thing is off, it unleashes a series, a chain of events, and like the entire behavior of the car is off. What you expect? Yeah. How do you think is your grip strength with the wheel? Like how hard are you holding the wheel? Too too hard. Maybe that's why. Maybe like you should communicate with the force feedback. If you look at my steering, it, it shakes a lot. It, it even should make you think that I have a very strong force feedback, but I don't. I only have 11 centimeters. But because my hands are so relaxed, I feel w exactly what's happening with the car through the force feedback. Yeah, I, I squeeze the steering wheel like oh, crazy, always. no. Yeah, y your, yeah, your fingers have to be relaxed. No, that's my biggest mistake. My lifetime biggest mistake. And I even improved it eh, during the years. Because mm -hmm. I remember at the beginning, I actually... I broke one steering wheel after two years what? of use. Because I was pushing for the stretch. That's I was pushing crazy. the steering wheel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. That, that might be the reason you're like half a second slower. Just for that. Just because of that factor. Absolutely. My optimal is 5-2. Nice. Dude, now that you told me, I think that's it. Your homework for this next week is relax yeah. your hands and yeah. feel the tire surface temperature differences. Well, it changes too much. When I just try to relax in this lap. And it's going to feel terrible error. initially. So I was actually doing this exercise this morning in the piano. I'm doing like uh -huh. a very complicated piano piece and I was trying to I identify that I was like tensing up my hands in some places. So I deliberately relaxed and ignored the mistakes that came with the relaxation. Because me being bothered by the mistakes was making me tense up again. So what mm. I was there was like relax and then deal with the mistakes while continuing to relax. Yeah. So when I've done that, I was like, okay, well it works. Now it works. So now I was playing all day today and I was much better, much more difficult pieces that I was playing when I was doing my university and it was working just because I was bypassing that tension and I like not letting it tense up again. But in order to create this new muscular memory, you have to adapt and it's going to feel terrible for the first week. Yeah. So you have to just obsess about that. I promise you, if you create a better more relaxed muscular memory in the simulator you're gonna translate that to real life yeah promise definitely. do you want to check out the five one yeah that would be great yeah so you you intensify the braking in this in this hairpin you brake light and then you intensify because you go uphill and then downhill yeah yeah, yeah but again it. it's just five percent so it's like this much here and then a little bit more deeper yeah mm. you're right like here i know I, I i can already imagine that the car is getting lighter yeah so i just break less and then here i imagine the compression and kind of like yeah okay so here see when I realized the car was losing it, I immediately dropped the brakes to zero and started mm. coasting. Instead of instead of a counter steering, you just drop the brake. Exactly. That's what I say in the, in the course. Did you, did you get to that lesson? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like releasing the brakes is number one priority. Counter steering is the second one. Yeah. See, I, <laughs> this is so funny because I lose the rear here. Now. I release the brakes and add steering. Now, boom. So mm -hmm. I induce the understeer to correct the oversteer while still making the front tires work and okay. point the car. You can see the onboard? Yep. So this is Vallelunga, an Italian circuit. See that you can really use the the brake and the steer to rotate the car. That that mm -hmm. was not clean, but it 
It was fast actually. With this kind of cars, when you lose the rear, you counter steer a bit and use the counter steer to keep the car rotating. Mm -hmm. You don't do it with iRacing with the GT3. I mean, you will always have to counter steer a little bit. So it's just a proportion of how much of the slide is being corrected by the weight transfer and how much is being corrected by the steering. To some extent, the proportion is much more aggressive in iRacing towards just releasing the brakes is gonna be enough. In real life, in depending on the car, that's not enough. If you just release the brakes, the car is gonna continue to oversteer and you have to counter steer. So it's probably like a matter of how much of each tool you have to use. But I'm saying that, and <laughs> Dude, my biggest problem in real life, mm -hmm. I'm afraid of oversteering. You will see my uh, driving, yeah. it's perfect. When I say perfect, I say slow. Two under the limit all the time. Look at how much I counter steer with these cars. <laughs> I was counter steering while entering the corner. Ah. Oh, this is so cool. Look at this next corner. Nice. That's so cool. Is that Mugello? Yeah. Also in the final corner. Oof. Okay, so let's go to the race. Rolling start. Yeah. He was just sleeping. It's crazy because of the GoPro, you can hear more the car ahead than my own car. Yeah. Usually I, I put two cameras, one close to the exhaust, so it records the best possible audio and then I mix them. Oh, nice. You see, you won't see any correction. You saw this? Yeah, but that, that was not a correction. That was just like a... a... It was just he me correcting time. the line. Yeah, I think he... Yeah, he probably shouldn't have corrected it. Okay, so let's keep going. Pussy! Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's normal. This is my first race, the second day ever in this car. <laughs> what would you expect? Dude, the most scary thing ever is doing this corner flat here. Wait, here, this flat. Whoa. And then the next corner also flat. Blind. Look at this. Whoa. This was this was not flat. I lifted. But, but can you? Yeah, you can do it flat. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it flat easy. This one here, I'm not trusting the downforce. And then yeah, uh, I'm, uh, especially with the right house. I'm staying here on purpose just to tell myself, look at how stupid your line is, your speed is. <laughs> but at yeah. lap after lap, I was telling this to myself on exit and still over slowing on entry. It's just mm. some, I don't, I don't know, self-preservation. Afraid of doing a mistake or something. See, yeah, what, every lap. Yeah, how much does this car cost? 50k. Mm. Yeah, it's too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the car, I'm thinking about my life. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm scared. So you're scared of injuring yourself? Yeah, more than the car. Wow. I think I, I need to work out more, eat better, and have a little bit more like adrenaline, testosterone, like just fucking be in a better physical shape to to endure mm -hmm. that because the min my mentality is heavily affected by how fit i am the crazy thing is that if you say if you tell me uh yeah, flat all the damages are included i can do it flat in the first lap i don't care about what? injuring myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's crazy yeah i i, I got too many injuries so i mean i got used to it yeah. i broke too many bones i With never bikes, broke any I was bone in my scared. life oh never never ever uh, you should never got seriously hurt. 
No, I mean, breaking bones is not that... Uh, the, the, the joints are worse. I, I never crashed. I spun once my entire life. I'm just cautious, overly cautious, because I never went to the other side, I guess. But I mean, yeah, I'm just... racing a full season next year, so eventually it's gonna happen. Sometime, well, one day it will happen. You, you saw my crash where I destroyed the car in the, at the beginning of the year. I think I saw it, yeah. Th that was bad. I mean, I broke two vertebrae. That's crazy. That was, <laughs> that was really bad. <laughs> it still hurts. But you know, the, I didn't know about the vertebrae. The week after, I was already training with the two broken vertebrae. <laughs> but then the pain was too much, and I said, okay, I need to get another C CT scan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they found the issue. <laughs> the but issue. One month later, <laughs> the mechanical yeah. failure. <laughs> one month later, I tried to race. I would have made it, but that was too risky. So I said, okay. I, I race two months later. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, man. So, I'm going to sleep now. All right, Thank man. You. Have fun practicing. Thanks, man. Stop Thanks, crashing man. and hurting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. That would be a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> See you, man. Thank you. Bye bye. The biggest danger in motorsport and in any domain, really, is to create bad habits. Bad habits is like teaching your muscles how to do the wrong thing. And from there, fixing that wrong habit takes five times longer than if you just develop the right thing right away. So if you're getting advanced and you're hitting a plateau, it's probably because you developed some small bad habits that can be fixed if you look into it properly. This course is structured. I have taken years of notes doing over 2000 coaching sessions, understanding what are the patterns of the driving technique when you start developing them. So the order of the lessons are actually very well thought and you have to take them in order and make sure that you're ticking all those boxes before you move on to the next one. This course is going to make you faster in a month than you would without it in over a year. And there's a big chance it will make you faster than you would ever be because of the bad habits that we talked about. It's very easy to get in a plateau and never improve after that if you don't know exactly what is the problem. So here's my promise to you. If you don't improve, you get your money back. No questions asked at all. You just tell me, hey, I want my money back. I will give you your money back right away. As soon as I read your message, refund. Because that's how much I trust my work. And we've been doing this guarantee for years and all we get is positive reviews and people wanting more. So I trust my work. You should give it a try. If you want your money back, you literally don't have to justify anything. Remember, if you have any questions, just send me a message on Instagram or Discord or wherever you find me. And make sure you join the Discord community and chat with the current students. Ask them, is it worth it? Should I get it? They will definitely help you. Our community is so active, it's insane. I got to a point where the Discord is alive on its own. I don't have to manage it anymore because people are just there helping each other and getting faster and faster and faster. If you're thinking about joining the family, don't hesitate. We have the most welcoming sim racing community in the planet and the doors are open for you.